Hello everyone. Welcome back to Homestuck. I know it's been a long time, but shockingly, I'm still a little sick. I don't know if you can hear it as much, because I did just blow my nose a whole bunch. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much all I got left. I'm mostly feeling better otherwise. So hopefully things should be okay now. Um, if you're enjoying Homestuck, like and subscribe. Maybe, you know like the video and consider becoming a member if you want to see these episodes early okay with that out of the way <laughs> and actually remembering it this time it's time to do the episode so let's uh do it oh i'm wearing the wrong pair of headphones hold on a second <laughs> that would have been so embarrassing if a sound page came on and i was like why can't i hear it um i have two sets of headphones because my computer doesn't have a USB uh, connection. Well, it does. Like, I have a dongle for it, but I don't have it put in there all the time because it's annoying to switch between the two like that. So I just have some wired headphones that I had from ever so long ago that I use instead. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's what happened. Anyway, <clears throat> last time Dirk explained a lot of history. And I think we're still doing it, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. I will disregard your anomalous observation for now and continue conversing as if it never happened. Right, good plan. Um, anywho, that's a heck of tragic and thrilling tales, Dirk. That's a heck of tragic and thrilling tale, Dirk. I don't know. I am still totally cockeyed and catawampus about all of, about it all, and I don't even know what to think. <laughs> Shockingly, I've seen both of these words before. Although I thought this was something else. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But you believe me, right? Oh, yes, every word of it. Wow. Why, shouldn't I? You're my friend, and I trust you. I would still just think it's pretty impressive, is all. After all this time, even after all this time, you pretty much, you're pretty much a one-of-a-kind dude. <laughs> Not really. I just like believing stuff and believing in people. Wait, what do you mean? About what? When you said after all this time, you just told me now. Yes. Hang on. Blark! That deja vu -y shit is happening again! Okay, I'm sure we've had this conversation before. So many things are familiar. I remember you saying that the one-of-a-kind dude thing, and I remember the word catawampus, and... All of it! What's going on? Took you long enough to figure it out. Pages are real... Pages really are a slow-burning class, damn. Figure what out? You're asleep. Ow. That's right. I fell off the platform thing, and guess I got knocked out? Yup. So I'm dreaming. Kinda. It's a dream bubble. What's that? A place in the infinite abyss where sleeping people can share dreams with each other while revisiting memories. Also where they can meet dead people. <laughs> so, are we sharing a dream together? And you're currently asleep too? Ah, uh, currently in the future. No. Even if I was, I wouldn't visit a dream bubble. That only happens when your dream self is dead like yours is. Mine is not. Hmm, I guess I understand. So, what's the deal then? Wait. You said this is where they meet dead people, too. Shit! Dirk, are you dead? Are you a ghost? No, dude, chill. I'm fine. Then what the fuck is going on? Who am I actually talking to? Well, who are the people you talk to when you have a regular dream? What? Ah. Like just a boring normal dream and there's a person you're talking to. Who's that? I don't know. It's nobody. Just a projection of your own mind. Dream bubbles don't always need to be shared by dreamers and dead people. You can go to sleep and wake up in one alone, reliving an old memory. Kind of like a normal dream, until you remember it's just a memory, which is where we are now. Okay, so I'm having like a lucid dreamy thing in a magic bubble, and you are by just like a figment of my imagination? Yeah, basically. So I'm just talking to myself. That's kind of stupid. Well, yeah, but not quite. You could view me as a projection of the real Dirk within your mind, as expressed through all your thought patterns about him. So I'm kind of a splinter of his corporeal self who happens to live in your awareness. I'm a certainly close approximation to the real thing, for all intents and purposes. Just how starting, startlingly close are we talking? I'm not going to give you a bogus percentage like glasses, because that's not my shtick, but pretty damn close. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> he must know a lot of stuff about Turk. <laughs> okay, that's fair, but... Man, there is something that feels kind of weird about this. You being in my head, it's a little messed up. What's messed up about it? You're the one who put me here, with your intimate understanding of all his mannerisms and predilections, and a splintered existence is pretty much how he rolls. This is how shit is, bro. 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry for saying it's messed up, but it's still a bit frustrating. I've been trying to talk to you all day, but all I get is your pesky responder bedeviling me at every turn, and your friggin' robot punching me across the ocean, and then throwing a weird tantrum and ripping his nuclear heart out in front of me. And if that weren't enough, I tumbled off the doohickey and knocked myself out, and now I'm strolling down memory lane with the, your fake brain ghost. It's like you are surrounding me from all sides with imitations of yourself, but never the real you. Cheese and fucking crackers. When do I just get to talk to the actual Dirk? Jake, what do you even know about someone's actual self? What makes it actual? What's actuality? What a horseshitty question. I don't know anything about actuality, I guess. But I know some philoso philosobabble horseshit when I dad blasted hear it. <laughs> I'm just saying... This isn't really your field of expertise. Dirk is the heart guy. He's the one walking the path of self, even when he doesn't know it, like right now. But what does that mean? And how can you really be made of only my thoughts when I don't even know what you're talking about sometimes? Or when I didn't know some of the things you're telling me? Like about being in a dream bubble? How can I tell myself about that stuff through Brain Ghost Dirk? <laughs> through Brain Ghost Dirk, how do you think? Who says you don't know these things on some level? I don't think I do. I have no business knowing these things. Pages have a lot of untapped potential. That's practically all there is to the class, actually. But when they eventually find it, find it, look out. And the ones to deal in hope? Shit, man. I'm scared of you already, and I'm not even real. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hologram Dirk. Are you sure you aren't real? No offense, but I kind of get the same smart-ass vibe from you that I do from the responder. Hi, ha ha, I have the same basic, per basic personality as Dirk, but without any accountability or anything, so let me just be kind of flippant and mess with this Jake fella's head. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that is a surprisingly decent observation about me. Yeah, see, I think I maybe did a little too good of a job brain cloning you. This is way too much like talking to the real fake Dirk. Holy cow, what a dumb sentence that was. He did do a good job. Perfect job, in fact. Untapped potential, remember? I don't think one of Dirk's splinters could exist nearly as well in anyone's mind other than yours. <laughs> well, that's just spiffy for me. But I'm starting to feel somewhat like I'm being haunted by you now. I just want to talk to my real buddy. And by real, I just mean the original guy. What do you even want to say to him? No, oh, I don't know. It's not like you can keep any secrets from me here. Pretty much am your brain. Nah, no, don't say that. It's so weird. <laughs> you do realize he's coming for you. Dirk in the real world. Man has his designs. Yes, I know. Want to talk about it? With you? No. That's like, that's like talking to him about it, which is like really jumping the gun, I think. <laughs> you better chance, what better chance is there to try talking about it than with a stunt double for your hyper-aggressive suitor within the safety and privacy of your own mind? I, but I can't yet. I just can't. There are some feelings I'm not sure how to put into words. And I am doing it in front of you, whether you're a stunt double or brain puppet or whatever. It makes me feel uncomfortable. So there are feelings you don't want to try to put into words, even while you're dwelling entirely within the realm of your own mind. Yes. What's so hard to understand about that? What about the spider ghost? Huh? The girl you saw? When you got fucking clobbered by Dirk's robot and you passed out, you dreamed about a spider ghost alien girl. Oh yeah, what about her? You like her? Man, what? That's dumb. I saw her for three seconds and she waved at me and I woke up. Yeah, and it took all of three seconds for you to fall in love with the cute spider ghost. Why do you keep calling her a ghost? Because she's been dead for like a zillion years, dude. Oh well. Holy shit? <laughs> Don't change the fact you like her, let's not pretend it will. You're going to make things complicated for yourself. No, I won't. Yeah, you will. You're too fucking wishy-washy. Between Dirk, Spider Ghost, Jane... Man, poor Jane. What? What about Jane? You tell me. What was even the deal with that? Our last chat ended on a very pleasant and amicable terms. She was upbeat and chipper as ever. I failed to see what reason one might have to feel sorry for her. Sorry, I coughed. <laughs> uh, yeah. You totally read her like a book. Really handled that conversation like a champ. Uh, wait, didn't I? Look out, bitches, it's Jake Casanova Lady Slayer English. He's back in heat, and is frequently able to parse the literal meaning of things women say. <laughs> what are you getting at? We're running out of time. She'll be here soon. Uh, Jane? No, doofus. Spider ghost. Wow. Wow, okay. Where? Wait, she is? Oh, fuck. 
Look at you, I'm telling you. Three damn seconds of ogling an alien in a blue dress and you're completely hopeless. Stop fidgeting around like that. Your hair looks fine. Do you want me to tell you how your breath smells? Screw you. I am cool as such a cucumber. Okay, then. Ah, uh, why? Does my breath not smell okay? You're dreaming, Jake. Your breath is the only th is only a thing if your brain wants it to be. Oh, okay. Phew. Uh, when is she coming? Why is she visiting my dreams? Soon. She's been waiting out for the right time to enter. Waiting for you to snap out of the memory. Clearly the girl has the patience of a saint. <laughs> well, she's waited like a thousand years, so sure. All right. Dang, it's warm in this dream bubble. How can I be s sweating in a dream? Where do you keep the dream towels? Will you calm the fuck down? It's a figment of your imagination, and you're making me nervous. <laughs> but really, who is she? What's her deal, and what does she want from me? Since all this is so called un since all this so-called untapped potential in my subconscious taking the form of yet another sassy dark clown seems to know everything would be okay if I troubled my own brain for a few flippin' answers. You should try to be more polite to me, seeing as I am a representation of your entire mind. I have complete control over all your basic functions. I could trigger a particularly spirited bowel movement right now before she gets here, so watch your step. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, don't. Just kidding, dude. Jesus. I'd never make you shit your pants in front of a girl you liked, even if she does happen to be my chief competition. We Dirk Splinters can be pretty Machiavellian, but we do actually have some fucking standards. Okay. Thank you for promising to keep my trousers tidy. <laughs> anyway, she's visiting now to bring you into the loop on some things. Important details you should know about your relation to the bigger picture. The much, much bigger picture. I still don't understand how you know. Well, excuse me, my brain knows this stuff because I'm a page? How does that make sense? And also, if you know the things she will say, why don't you just tell me the things? <laughs> Intuition and the subconscious mind are powerful things when harnessed the right way. As for why I don't tell you, why not just let her tell you? You're the one with the damn crush on her. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, dude. She's here. Shush. I know. Oh, man. Um. What the fuck are you looking at me for? Say something to her, jackass. Okay. I will, I will. You're distracting me, though. Can you uh, scoot over a bit? Oh my god, fine. <laughs> Hi there, welcome. Uh, don't mind him, he's just a brain clone of my best friend. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> Bro, she can't even see or hear me. You're making a fool out of yourself. Wait, she can't? Why didn't you tell me that? You are really throwing me off here. Uh, I, I don't know, because I didn't think you were going to have a neurotic meltdown at the sight of a girl. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to know stuff like that, seeing as you are literally my brain. God damn it, will you just chillax and woo this fucking ghost, babe? How can I chillax when you keep talking to me, and, and it's really disconcerting? <laughs> You're totally embarrassing yourself, dude. You're talking to nobody. Man, I'm starting to feel bad for Spider Ghost. Look at her. She's getting uncomfortable. Shh, just sh sh shut up. I can't think. You're being so lame. I don't care if I'm a figment of your imagination or not. I can't take this bullshit. Either you get your shit together and put the moves on this dead space vixen, or I start fucking with your cortex and make you pop a dream boner. Oh my god, don't you dare. <laughs> You don't think I'll do it? No, please, please, don't give me a bone attack. <laughs> important, important for the situation in more ways than one. So Jake plans in motion. Next stop, Boner City. So that was the plan all along? To give me a boner? And you... Uh, got one. <laughs> you motherfucker! Oh, oh, tee -hee, false alarm. I see very funny, cool guy. I think you're full of shit. You're bluffing. You don't even have the power to give me a phantasmal action. <laughs> Jake, please. Members of the Juggalo party aren't the only ones who can pitch a big tent. <coughs> then go ahead. Make my fucking day. I'm ready for you. Do you think I'm afraid? I'll take your boner magic like a man. <laughs> Not ashamed. I will stand tall and proud at full mast in front of this pretty alien. Do your worst, bastard. This is so stupid. You are literally out of your mind. And this is coming from your mind itself. <laughs> I can't even watch this. I'm out of here. Well, good riddance to ironic hipster douchewad rubbish is what I have to say about that. I wonder what Jack's up to right now. What? I mean, what? Who's Jack? You just have to talk to the girl, okay? You got some damage control to do. <laughs> Start jailbreak adventure. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is happening. <laughs> you wake up locked in a deserted jail cell, completely alone. There's nothing at all in your cell, useful or otherwise. <laughs> well, there's a, a giant key. Attempt to pry open window. There are no objects around with which to pry open the window. Look at that. 
This frame is precisely identical to the previous frame. You advanced nothing whatsoever with that dumb idea. Do you realize this adventure is new in 5,000 panels? And now we have you to watch you flounder around in a jail cell for God knows how long. Exactly how many panels do you want this to go on for? Over 9,000? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to hear the phrase over 9,000. You need to begin making better decisions if you want to escape. <laughs> Get key. What did you not understand about this statement? There is nothing at all in your cell useful or otherwise. There is no key. It is an extremely crude drawing of a key on the floor. Really, the drawing's so bad it's ridiculous to think that some prankster thought it would fool you. Which it did. Whoever drew this key clearly employing the most primitive drawing tools available. You are obviously being fucked with in this stupid jail cell. You expect you'll continue to be fucked with and it makes you wish you could stab something. <laughs> most primitive drawing imag tool imaginable? Mm, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine what that could be. Get pumpkin. What pumpkin? Oh. <laughs> What fucking pump thing? pumpkin? There is no pumpkin. Once again, there is nothing at all in your cell useful. Or oh, god damn it. Okay, a pumpkin appears. You guys must be feeding time for the prisoners. These prospidian jails are like luxury suites compared to the penal system on Durs. Should be the softest time you ever did. <laughs> okay, so this is... Okay, I, I understand where we are now. <laughs> wow, look. Remember this frame? Wow. What a horrible idea. You don't eat fresh produce. The thought is revolting to you. What do you think these sharp teeth are for? Or, uh, what's left of them at least. You'll have to make note of a, to file a protest with your lawyer. Complain of cruel and unusual treatment. The coddling criminal justice system will undoubtedly see to it you are given some proper meat to consume. Perhaps a prime cut of filet mignon, as if you are a guest of honor. What a bunch of powder puffs, with all their namby-pamby morals and compassion. This kingdom makes you sick. Okay, look out the window. You step up to the little Kirby thing and get a better look outside. Can't make a plan without getting your bearings. Oh, in the tower. A lone sentry is on duty below. Shed a few obscenities his way. You wonder aloud what a guy has to do not to get a decent meal around here. Hey, you're talking to that guy. It's no use though, he ignores you. You just look at that stoic face, the unshaken discipline, the stalwart sense of duty and pride. This is what it means to be a member of the Prospidian Royal Guard. What a load of shit, you grumble to yourself, but loud enough for him to hear. <laughs> Inspect Pumpkin. That guy won't be of any use. You doubt he could even manage to lure him into your pissing radius, magnificent though it is. <laughs> you give the pitiful gold a little kick. A terrible thought occurs to you. What if you have no choice but to eat this awful thing? You can't let it come to that. You have to get out of here. Uh, hold on, what's that? Take a closer look. Please look inside. Clubs, deuce! Eureka! Droll, you beautiful bastard! Looks like he snuck something inside the pumpkin to help you escape. Probably a bomb. You're gonna have to remember to give him a promotion when you get out of here. Or at least reduce his daily newspaper floggings. Need to think of a way to get the bomb out of there. You can't just smash it with your foot or you might explode and take your own leg off. Too bad they confiscated your knives so you could slice the thing open neatly. Maybe even carve a funny face into it. <laughs> you bet you're the first guy who ever thought of doing that. Yeah, search for carving apparatus. Hang on. You remember seeing some pointy things just outside the window. Luckily both kingdoms are totally covered in pointy things. Can't swing a dead cat without impaling it on one. Okay, take pointy thing. You snap off a golden pointy thing. Should be sharp enough to do the trick. Carved pumpkin. It slices through the meat of the vegetable like a sharp spire through thick squash. This is working so well. Who the hell needs a trusty knife when you're resourceful? Screw knives! Uh, you take it back. You can't stay mad at knives. <laughs> Open it. You can taste your liberation already. Can't wait to hear the sweet ticking of the bomb that's definitely in there. That'll be the sound of freedom you decide. You pull off the lid to reveal... I coughed again. <laughs> a whole bunch of knives. <laughs> God damn it, Joel! You're welcome, Wink. <laughs> He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Although now that you think about it, he might be by default. Since he just sent you all the sharpest tools in the shed. <laughs> ah, well, you could probably use some of these. You never once been disappointed to receive a pumpkin full of knives. And you're not about to make an, an exception. <laughs> Empty pumpkin on floor. Wow, and the little Scotty dogs, too. <laughs> Take a quick inventory of the smuggled contraband. Hold on, looks like he snuck something else in the pumpkin under all the knives. Something <clears throat> compromising. Salmon compromising material. The droll knows what it's like spending long, cold nights alone in the clink. A man needs a little reading material to keep him company, if you know what I mean. If you know what he means. <laughs> if your skin wasn't made of polished jet black carapace, your cheeks would be turning bright red. No one could ever know about this. You must destroy the evidence or disguise it somehow. Forged blade out of illicit literature. <laughs> yeah, okay. None shall be the wiser. It's the perfect crime. 
when you bust out of prison, you should be locked right back up again because of how perfect this crime is. <laughs> Throw a knife down there to get that guy's attention. Well, that should get this guy's attention. He's gonna die. Uh, fortunately, only keeps his attention till he dies, which is almost instantly. You need to come up with a better plan. Well, you would argue that random stabbings are their own reward. <laughs> yeah, they aren't getting you any closer to escape. <laughs> okay, examine exit. Door's locked tight. You're gonna need a key to open it. Preferably one that isn't horribly drawn on the floor to taunt you. Knock on door. Maybe if you knock out enough in just the right way at just the right time. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait, no. Not yet. Wait for it. Wait. Now, your clumsy fist accidentally flies through the bars, knocking out a passerby. Keys from his key ring jangle on the floor. <laughs> it's quite possible one of those keys will unlock your door, but they're all out of reach now. What next, genius? Use knife to snag one of the keys on the floor. <laughs> you see if a knife can adequately lengthen your reach, but it's no use. They're still just outside your modest slashing radius. I almost said radiance. <laughs> no deaths, need a different approach. Wait a minute, another guard notices your unauthorized tomfoolery and radios for backup. Beckon the other guard over. He looks mo none too pleased with your misbehavior. This will surely result in reduced rations. You can expect to find a slightly smaller pumpkin in your jail cell come sky arise, mister. You keep beckoning him, just a little closer. Little closer. Convince second guard to pick up keys for you. Use a little persuasion to see if you can get him to, uh, Jack, no! <laughs> That's not how you convince someone to do something. You're supposed to save the stab until after you intimidate him to doing something for you. For doing what you want. How exactly is the dead guy supposed to pick up some keys for you? Real smooth, Jack. What's the plan now? Bury the keys under a growing pile of torsos? This is turning out to be the second shittiest jailbreak attempt anyone's ever seen. <laughs> Look around room. The only remaining thing in the room worth noting is the other corner of your cell. Just a transport pad prisoners are supposed to use as a waste receptacle. These were decommissioned in Durst prisons a long time ago. Too many prisoner suicides and severed heads showing up in the waste bins. None of these auto decapitations were authorized with the right paperwork, so privileges had to be suspended. You hear the door open and slam shut. Somebody else is in your cell. Welcome guest. <laughs> oh, it's a heart boxcars, but prospect. Looks like the sentry phoned downstairs for a little muscle. It's one of the regular regulator lugs they use to keep the general populace in line. <laughs> the gen pop, okay. This guy has an itchy baton wrist and that look in his eye you know all too well. He ain't living in this room until one of you is good and bloody. Be the other guy. You attempt to be this guy down here, but you can't be this guy down here because he's dead. But it does serve as a convenient cutaway for the vicious beating that is currently taking place in your cell. We don't, we don't need to be watching that kind of prison brutality. We can take our sweet time looking at this dead body while terrible noises can be heard from your prison window. Okay, that should be long enough. You can stop being this guy now. <laughs> you stop being the other guy in time to see, for, for us to see that you have just finished quickly and cleanly subduing the... Jack. Jack, the man is dead. Stop that. Jack! 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 <laughs> Apologize to guard's body. You start to feel sorry for stabbing that guy with seven knives in the back and bashing his face in the door 89 times. Well, maybe not all of the 89 times. For the first 88, you definitely felt pretty good. But the 89th face bashing, you were definitely starting to feel pretty sorry. And by sorry, I guess you mean bored. Anyway, you mutter something under your breath that could, be, that could easily sound like an apology to someone who wasn't listening very well. Give guy a proper funeral. Whatever the state of contrition might be, there can be no question about it. A man dedicated to royal service deserves a proper and dignified funeral. However, since there is no casket in your cell that is nearly big enough for this lug's hefty torso, you'll have to improvise. <laughs> Shove him down the poop hole. No? Okay. You sever the god's head with your most trusted of all the trusty knives and begin sizing up that hollow pumpkin. It'll definitely be snug, but you think you can make fit. Make fit. <laughs> you don't care what anyone says. You say this pumpkin was made for this fucker's melon. Fits like a damn glove. Close it up. Perfect. A textbook burial for a man of honor and distinction. The sacrifices made by our public servants don't get anywhere near the respect they deserve, you think. <laughs> Bring Casket over to receptacle. His funeral will not be complete without a proper send-off. But a stinking garbage dump's no place for the head of a brave soldier to rest. No, you must first make some modifications to the device. Doing a hard time behind bars is a motivated man to learn a trick or two when it comes to systems like this. Pry open panel with knife. You open it up and switch a few wires around. There. Now instead of a nasty old pile of rotten pumpkin matter, the destination should be the throne room of the Prospidian Palace. <laughs> Surely the queen will want to be alerted of the noble sacrifice of this brave warrior, so that arrangements can be made to honor the hero. <laughs> Send him off. Look inside. 
You hear the door open again, followed by the sound of surly footsteps. Could it be another glutton for a good face bashing who's decided to visit your cell? Greet visitor. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, uh, you see. Appears there are quite a few said gluttons this time. <clears throat> Settle down, gentlemen. There are quite enough face bashings to go around. Quick, be the other guy again. Uh, you be the other guy while they beat you senseless. Other guy, be Jake. <laughs> I think that's a... Oh, it's not quite enough to end it. <laughs> I just have to get a drink, so I'm going to have to pause. Cam back. I'm a little worried in uh, <laughs> doing... <laughs> Jake and Arania's voice on my with my current amount of sickliness, but we'll see. <laughs> Suddenly, you aren't the the other guy anymore. You couldn't quite be the other guy anyway, since he's dead. Even though deadness hasn't really stopped us from being guys before. <laughs> Nevertheless, the dead guy starts being Jake, who is not a dead guy. Well, his dream self is dead, but his non-dead non-dream self isn't, and that's the guy we're being—a guy who is asleep. That non-dead sleeping guy who is presently talking to a non-sleeping dead ancient spider ghost who long ago earned the achievement badge Gift of Gab. And boy, does she know how to use it. <laughs> Attempt to get a gab in, Edgeways. <laughs> hey, remember the Wizard of Oz thing that we were talking about before? She's got the ruby slippers. <laughs> I think Jade also had them, right? That was part of the Wizard of Oz pastiche there. Uh... <laughs> Okay, Jake is actually going to have something he can actually talk. Okay. I don't... Okay, I have to get into the Arania voice because I've only done it once. Um... Because <laughs> this is Vriska. Okay. And then we go from there and make it a little bit less mean. There we go. That's pretty much it, I think. I hope. <laughs> well, Jake, don't you have anything to say? <laughs> I think I've spent enough time introducing myself. You have hardly said a word. It would be nice to know whether my long story has confounded you in any particular way, or if you are just being shy. Ah. Yes, Jake, I understand this is very much to learn all at once, but do you really want me to keep speaking until I am blue in the face? Nope. <laughs> You appear to be perspiring heavily. There is no reason to be nervous, especially considering you are only dreaming. Shit. I'm uh, sorry. I don't know where I put the dream towels. It's okay. Well, at the risk of talking about myself a little more, I feel it would be dishonest not to confess. What? I'm a fairly gifted psychic. Well, really? Yes. Like, you can see the future. Are they ghost powers or troll powers? Or, wait, shucks, that's a dumb-sounding question. No, that was a fine question. They're troll powers. Sometimes those of my blood type will have them naturally. And no, they are not prognosticative abilities. They let me access another's mind in a way that can be terribly invasive if abused. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, invasive? Yes, including the ability to control minds when exploited fully. Uh-oh. <laughs> but don't worry. They don't seem to work the same way on your species. They are considerably weaker. The most I can do is get an empathic impression of your emotional state. So if I can speculate that you are shy or nervous, it is because that I sense that you are. Oh man, you're kidding. So much for trying to be cool, I guess. Although I probably blew that when you saw me yelling at nobody about boners and stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't say you blew it, but that was certainly odd. Who were you talking to, if you don't mind my asking? It was like a brain ghost memory splinter of my best friend Dirk, who was stuck in my head, as you can't see. <laughs> and he was kind of hassling me about trying to get me to talk to him about how his real self has a thing for me. But I kind of think it would be weird for me to talk to his brain imposter about that, at least for now. And then you showed up and you caught me at an awkward moment where he was threatening to make some bodily functions happen in front of you as a joke, which would have been embarrassing as all blasted heck. But now it turns out you can read my mind, too, so I'm surrounded by brain invaders. You seem cool, Arania, but, ah, uh, when am I going to wake up? I am not a brain invader, though. I said I can only sense your emotions. I think it's polite to let people know before long. Otherwise, I begin to feel a bit underhanded. <laughs> 
Okay, I guess that's not too bad. I think I can keep my feelings buttoned up. That is what strong and adventurous gentlemen do, I think. They keep a stiff upper lip, even on the inside. <laughs> that way they are never embarrassed and feel slightly more brave about stuff. But you don't have to. That was not the point of me telling you. I'm used to sensing many things from people. There aren't any feelings you could have that would be that surprising to me or compromising to you. I really just wanted you to relax for the brief time we have in this bubble to talk to me. Or you have to talk to me. Um, gotcha. But what should I talk about? Well, I've spent almost no time examining this iteration of your universe. The gods have given me very little access to it through the memories of others until now. I believe they are finally beginning to bridge the divides between long estranged compartments of reality, allowing previously unintroduced parties to mingle. Those from different universes, both their initial iterations and their scratched reboots. Those from different spheres, ones of creative potential and of mortality. Though all of us... Through all of us, they attempt to bring closure to unsanctioned loops and restore stability to the cosmos. So, I am curious about you and your friends. What is your life like? My life? <laughs> I wish I could say it was more interesting, but it's actually been a mite lackluster. There are monsters, but I try to stay away from them, to tell you the truth. It's mostly just me sitting around here, watching movies and stuff, and sometimes polishing firearms. Guns are sweet, so are movies. <laughs> this is a terrible story. I understand. The same is mostly true for myself. I can sense that you are either very impressed or in some way intimidated by me, but when it comes down to the basics, a description of my life would be boring as well. <laughs> I almost read that as boring as hell. <laughs> Why don't you show me around? Uh, show you around my room? Uh, yes, okay. Well, there are some guns. Like I said, guns are great. There's a whole mess of movie posters on the wall. You probably never heard of any of them being a dead alien and such. <laughs> nope. And, uh, I don't know. There's a desk which I used to work on silly projects, and that's my bed, I guess, and, uh, hmm. What else? Dude, just FYI, you've been kind of staring at her. What? Shh. <laughs> what was that? N nothing. <laughs> But uh, nothing I'm not trying to fuck you up here, I promise. But you gotta watch what you're thinking, remember? Go away. <laughs> oh, man, no. See that thought you just had? That's exactly what I'm talking about. She's a fucking empath, bro. She can pick up on shit like that. Shh, shh not listening to you. <laughs> uh, Jake, uh, nothing. It's cool. I'm... You've got to be kidding. Did you seriously just think something that dirty? You must be doing this on purpose to spite me now. I mean, just wow, dude. That was X-rated as fuck. No, oh, no, stop. See, now you're talking about it and I can't get it. And now I can't help it. You're psyching me into having dirty thoughts. Get fucking lost to a developing brain douche. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gone. It's like a goddamn peep show in here and I feel like a sleazy piece of shit watching this from a dark corner in your mind. You have a graphic imagination, English. Kind of impressed. Shut up. They're just thoughts. It's not like I'm even trying to have them. They don't mean anything. Hmm. Should I leave and come back during another dream? <laughs> no. <laughs> don't read Spider Island. It wasn't that good. <laughs> okay, then. What's this? An illustrated story of some sort. <laughs> oh, no, it's Spider Girl. No. Hey, whoa! Let's not worry about that. It's nothing, really. Here, give me that, okay? Why are you getting flustered about this literature? Is it pornographic? It does not strike me as indecent at a glance. Though maybe our cultures have different standards. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, it's not like that at all. It's just, I don't know, it's just a nerdy comic I, I read. It's no big deal. There's got to be other stuff I can talk to you about. Let's see. Jake. Huh? You know, it's not the first time I've sensed that someone felt a flushed attraction for me. A, a flushed what's it? Oh my flipping gosh. <laughs> really? So does that mean Vriska could maybe tell too? But she... She didn't really use her powers as much. She only went into other people's minds when it was completely necessary. Like, when she was actually taking them over. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway... You really don't have to be embarrassed. It's perfectly okay. 
Oh god, oh god. You sense my stupid sexy thoughts, I knew it. God damn you, bogus brain strider. Someone needs to just kill me. Or at least make me wake up. This is so humiliating, I don't even... Can you please just slap me really hard? If not in retribution for my ungentlemanly train of thought, then at least to get me to wake up and save me from my own senseless buffoonery. <laughs> Actually, I do believe it would be within the scope of my abilities to get you to wake up. But do you really want me to do that? Ah, uh, maybe... <laughs> if it is true that you think I am attractive, then why wouldn't you want to spend a little more time here with me? What's the harm? Are you really in such a hurry to leave and feel sorry for yourself for no explicable reason? Well, no. I already told you, Jake. I'm used to sensing many different types of feelings. It's given me a different perspective on emotions than most have. For most, the feelings of others are often a mystery, so they are prone to speculation and paranoia about the motivations of people they meet. The emotions of others can seem like such well-guarded mysteries. People believe to begin that is how their own emotions should be treated as well. So when someone can read their thoughts easily, it feels like a violation. But you want to accustomed to reading those thoughts, there isn't the same perception of violation or secrecy. It's more like examining other self-evident facts about a person, like taking note of their appearance. It's still hard for non-psychics to understand this, though. Even if you explain it to them, it can lead to some awkward relationships, unfortunately. Ah, uh, I imagine it would. So, you sensed it when other fellas have had the, uh, <clears throat> hearts for you, eh? Feathers, yes. And ladies. It's happened. Yowza! You must have been uh, popular then, I guess. Haha. <laughs> oh no, no, not really. The fact that I've been the fleeting object of attraction to a handful of paints... A handful really paints the wrong social picture, I'm afraid. That's hard to believe. <laughs> It's my experience that people very often underestimate their own likability. I sense that feeling all the time. Probably because they're in the dark about others' thoughts. They are usually in doubt, so they frequently err on the side of pessimism. In many cases, they would be surprised if they knew how many around them were open to friendship. Or possibly something... more. I would venture that if you had such a sense, you even might be surprised yourself. <laughs> That's quite a laugh. <laughs> yeah, nobody would like me. <laughs> I'm quite sure my only suitor is my best bro. Even then, he is such a jumbled, stupid puzzle of unfathomable ironies. I'm not even sure about that half the time. I wish I had your powers. Yeah, we'd be top notch. You'd be parked on the corner of a relation. I'd be parked on the corner of Relationship Lane and Easy Street. I could kick back in my eligible bachelor's limousine and never fuck up or say anything awkward like I have been doing nonstop so far in the stream. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. That certainly does not describe my experience. You would think being able to sense the occasional attraction from others would be advantageous and inspire confidence in yourself, and it is nice when that happens, sure. But then, you feel the negative emotions directed at you as well, and even if they are less common than the positive ones, you have a way of dwelling on them and magnifying them far beyond their real significance. It's funny how an ability that should give you all the advantages in the world over others can lead you to feel worse about yourself than if you never had them. You put all of your energy into thinking about people with the bad feelings about you instead of the good, and you try your best to fix things, but usually it just gets worse. People think you are overbearing and needy. They don't understand what it is you want from them. I can see why I can drive some with my abilities to abuse their powers. Fortunately, I was able to resist that temptation. So there are people on your planet who do that? On the world I was from, it was rare. Only a few criminals and the outcasts would. But in the second iteration I mentioned, it was commonplace. Like I said, things were very different. In my world, though, the higher castes have a lot of responsibilities. It wouldn't be right to abuse my powers. Hold on, let's <laughs> talk about that at the end. <laughs> So you're in a higher caste because of the hemo spectrum thing you mentioned. Ah, so you were listening to my lengthy preamble. I heard all of it. I was just, ah, uh, well, go on. 
Yes, blue bloods like myself were higher than most. The job of each blood cast was to serve the needs of all those below it. We were to use our progressively greater longevity and wisdom to help the lower castes learn and grow, to listen to them and try to provide whatever they were missing, like a hierarchy of caretakers with increasing social responsibility. When the order functioned in harmony, our civilization would flourish. That is sure a neat sounding science fiction utopia. Uh, wait, duh. <laughs> I mean, science reality. But then it all went to shit because of that meddlesome demon? Yes. That demon you say I'm supposed to defeat? Yes. Uh, hang on. Will that be the same demon I'm named after? Who told you that? Uh, I guess technically my own brain did. That's interesting. I wasn't planning on mentioning that. Or at least not just yet. Oh, why? There's no reason to prematurely overcomplicate an already complicated tale. All facts will fall into place in due time. Yeah, but it's true, right? More or less. Did I know that already? Did I know that the blood thing happened in the alpha? Is it the alpha? I guess they're the beta trolls because they came first. It's, it's really annoying. But the original troll planet before the ones that we're used to. I thought that would have been one of the things that was implemented to further, like, by scratch in order to prepare the reality for the, the fight zone or whatever that they were going to have to go for. Doesn't that make some sense, you know? But then I guess someone from each type of the Hema Spectrum ended up there anyway, so maybe that doesn't make sense. But I don't know, that's a little weird, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. Coughing. To have, like, even though it's, like, mutually beneficial, the idea that, like, oh, you were born into the... <laughs> you were born into the care for class, so you have to care for everyone, is a little weird. Also, there's still a hierarchy. <laughs> it's not just, like, you get told what job you have to do, like it's the B movie or something. You have to, like, you're, you have a role in society determined entirely by the status of your birth. I don't know, that's a little weird. <laughs> I thought for sure that, like, it was going to be that um, the powers were segmented by blood type. But I guess if there were powers segmented by blood type in the real world, then naturally the ones with the more useful powers would become more powerful <laughs> stuff um and i also don't know what the powers of some of them are because like tavros is on the lowest end of the blood spectrum but he has the power to brain commune with animals whereas like gamzee's on the highest end of the spectrum and he doesn't seem to have any powers i don't think so i don't know <laughs> how does that work <laughs> Like, if the mind can, the mind readers were, like, the support class, let's just say, I guess that makes some sense. Um, I guess I don't know that the hemo spectrum is the same. Um, blue bloods were higher than most. I mean, that makes it feel like it was the same. I don't know, that's weird. That's a weird note to end on. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> I'm sorry for coffee in the microphone. Jake's voice has ruined me. I might not be able to record another episode today. God damn it. Um, thank you all for watching. Again. Question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Um, nah, everything is, like, too simple, I think. Like, I was gonna ask, oh, if you had somebody... Actually, that's, that's fairly simple, I guess. That's, like, a decent enough question. But I'll, I'll change it up a little bit so that nobody has to, like, expose themselves. Because, like, in the same case with Dirk, where, like, you have somebody in your mind narrating for you, basically. Somebody that you know very well. <laughs> 
Like, obviously, I can't ask you, ooh, if that, who would that person be? But, so let's make it fictional instead. If there was one fictional character that you could go into your mind and they would be the one you knew so well that you could just actually have a conversation and they would serve the similar role as Dirk, which fictional character would that be? I honestly don't know. For myself? Now that I'm thinking about it? <laughs> It'd probably have to be, like, something you watched when you were a kid and then you've gone back and watched and still liked it, so you, like, know... You have, like, very clear feelings about it, you know what I mean? But then again, Jake has only known Dirk for, like, what, three, four years? So I don't know. Maybe it doesn't have to be that deep. <laughs> or you just have to be obsessive like Jake is. <laughs> I don't know. Because um, he's so bored. I don't know. Fictional character. I think maybe the closest one I can think of, because I've played all the Zelda games, maybe Link, <laughs> but Link doesn't talk, so I don't know how that would work. <laughs> um, but I dropped off the Pokemon anime, so like it can't be any of those people, because I don't know everything about them. Then again, maybe you don't have to. I don't know. It's a weird question. I'd love to see your guys' answers. I think it'd be funny. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.